Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam might be reporting for the MediaSpeaks.com, and uh, hopefully, I'm dancing to something. I usually don't post this close together, but uh, there's an exception here. I'm posting uh, this closely now because Ink God did my tattoo. Also has upgraded my computer, and I'm going to be trying to add my graphics. That and like 25 people nailed the video within a few hours of when it got posted yesterday. And I did say the more of you that watch, the more videos I will post, and that promise is being kept. Um, also, for those of you watching live on the low def, uh, you probably you're like, well, you won't be getting the graphics and stuff. Um, for those of you that want to go to my channel, uh, correct views, it's at YouTube. Subscribe, and the high def version is uh, going to be posted there as long as there's no more gremlins in the system. And there very right, well may be. All right, guys, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson. This is disgusting. And if my graphics do work, what I'm about to show you will make you sick. Images obtained exclusively by Infowars show the aftermath of an alleged massacre of a Christian village in Syria during which men, women, and children were slaughtered and churches desecrated by Obama-backed FSA rebels. Uh, the article is photos, Obama-backed Syrian rebels ransack Christian church. I think I neglected to say that. But before I go on, among other things, they set an infant on fire in what looks like a manger. If the picture goes up, hopefully, um, as you can see, this is absolutely disgusting. And I'm not in favor of interceding here. I know that both sides of this, uh, in terms of leadership and ideology, they are filth. I don't mean the Islamic people. I mean the people on both sides of the FSA, uh, um, oh, yeah, President Scandal, what's it? Name just went zoop. Why in the world would you go with either, either side here? You've got the FSA openly killing churches, threatening to, um, Assad, by the way, threatening to increase their slaughtering, heart-eating ways, for those of you that uh, covered that story with me when I did it. And then you've got Assad's side. They think he might have used chemical weapons. Most people are pretty sure FSA did. This reminds me of uh, how many of you live in a crappy neighborhood I have on many occasions. Some people would argue that I still kind of do. Um, you got two drug dealers. And they're fighting next door. Do you give one of them a gun or a knife? Or do you stay out of the fight? Because there's no good going to come of that situation. That is Syria. This, this is really disgusting, people. The photos which were provided by a source inside the village of Duver in Syria's western province of Homs show ruined homes, ransacked churches, as well as the burned remains of what looks like an infant. According to the Assyrian International News Agency on May 29th, the armed rebels affiliated with the Free Syrian Army raided the Christian populated al village in Reef on the outskirts of Homs near the border of Lebanon and massacred all its civilian residents, including the women and children. And they're trying to say that Christians were responsible for um, so many of the problems there. Uh, everything going on being blamed on the Christians. Do you know who did something like this? Adolf Hitler did something like this. He did it against Jews. He did it against blacks. He did it against communists. He did it against homosexuals. Now we have Islamic Nazis, you know what I mean, um, in, in uh, racial ideology terms. and. Um, this is where we're going to fund. This is where we're going to send money. This is our great plan. It says that it's important to stress that it was the Syrian army, which is predominantly Sunni Muslim, that stepped in to help the Christians who were under siege from radical jihadist militants that now form the front 
fighting force of the FSA, who Obama wants to send money to, and weapons. See, Sunnis are better at segregating, and not in the... Uh, I wouldn't want to live there, but in separating fighting factions. And the Shiites are not. And uh, that is clearly evident here. Um, does it make you angry? Well, good, because if it does... Fortunately, Rand Paul says that he is going to help uh, Obama do this over his dead body. Um, also in full wars, uh, Steve Watson, Rand Paul, Obama's goal in Syria is to fight a stalemate. Um, Rand Paul is uh, what my brother, DJ Aram, refers to as shifty. Give you the insight into my brother's logic here. If somebody is shady, that person is always shady. They're just scummy, dirty, shady people. Some people are shifty. Shifty people are normally pretty cool. Shift. And every once in a while they do something that makes you wonder if you really want to be their friend, to follow the analogy. Rand Paul is politically, politically shifty. Most of the things that he's behind are very, very good. And then from time to time he does some dunderheaded thing, uh, like saying that all libertarians um, are pot, and pot smokers, and to paraphrase. Uh, but that was the that's what he was trying to allude to in order to score points with the Republicans. Um, he will basically leave his dad hanging in mid-election. Well, he also stands up for your rights against drone killings. And he did shift on that a little later on, too. But by and large, he's been rather consistent with it on the good side. Well, he's right here, too. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul slammed the Obama administration's world policeman outlook on foreign policy and accused the president of intentionally planning to fight a stalemate in Syria in a speech Monday. Appearing at the Veterans of Foreign Wars National Convention in Kentucky, Paul condemned the administration's policies of endless war and appealed for a more humble approach to overseas affairs. For our country's sake, certainly for our soldiers' sake, he said, for the sake of every veteran who ever donned a uniform and fought for this country, America's mission should always be to keep the peace, not to police the world, Paul urged. There is no greater priority for the federal government than the defense of the Constitution and the nation, Paul added. Yet sometimes... I think our defense is weakened by our over-eagerness to be involved in every civil war on the planet. Rand Paul summing it up perfectly. You, you, how could you not see that it is the libertarian mindset? It, and again, he's more of a, a constitutional Republican than a, uh, than a uh, libertarian Republican. But in any event, He's on the right side here. It is so night and day, uh, these people like Justin Amish and Rand Paul and Judge Napolitano that really know what's going on, and these people like Obama that want to send money to people that burn babies in churches. The right and wrong here is so easy to see. It really is. Guys, this is brought to you by Nitro Pack. Um, you can go to nitro-pack, but do me a favor. Go to themediaspeaks.com and click on it from there. Because when you do, everything that you purchase goes to help the media speaks. Did you see becoming Paul Revere? That cost us a small fortune to make just in uh, travel tickets and uh, gas. Did you see uh, the War on For Your Mind video? That was done by Kyle Phillips on the video editing there, and by Dan's video. All of these things can help be paid for by your donations and you shopping at Nitro Pack. I'm going to go to this real quick. Is anybody, anybody at all enjoying any summer this year? Hopefully nice warm weather. Well, we're getting nothing but rain in Ohio. And if you are getting said rain, $8.99 to space all-weather sleeping bag. That's a great price. A deluxe emergency heat reflective sleeping bag, $9.95. That could be very important. If you're in the climate I was just talking about. High Peak Chameleon 20 to 0 sleeping bag, 85.95. And those coffins that aren't made as well as that thing is. Guys, go to the media speaks .com. Click on Nitro Pack and know that you're going to get great merchandise and know that you are helping the media speaks when you do it. These are things that can save your life and uh, add to your summer fun. 
like I said, it is a great prep site. But I'm letting Kyle Court and Delay go at that. I'm going to spend the summer talking about how Nitro Pack can make your summer better. And it can't. Guys, a FoxNews.com, a Hernandez focus of grand jury probe for a 2012 double murder report says, this infuriates me. Do we live in a country where you are presumed innocent until proven guilty? Or do we live in a nation where you are presumed guilty before you are proven innocent? That's a very, very important question. Rewind it and listen to it again. Zimmerman. Automatically, so many spins, he was guilty, he was innocent long before he ever got there, instead of anybody waiting for the trial on a professional level. Um, uh, Big Ben, Roethlisberger. I'm, I'm a Patriots fan here. Um, again, and before I go on, I do not spend very much money at all on the NFL. The people that run the NFL are some questionable people indeed. So let me break the show for a second and say that I am a football fan. I am not an NFL fan. I have a few pieces of Patriots gear. Most of what I buy, I buy used at the secondhand shop so that the NFL doesn't get money for it. So yes, I'm a fan of it, but they don't make money off of me because I think they're scummy people by and large. Uh, again, not the players, but some of the people uh, that are in charge of it, some of the people that have the hidden agenda of limiting guns and that kind of thing. Uh, they have an agenda, and that's why I spend very little money on them, even though I like their sport. I'm not one of these brain-dead people that all they care about is football. Now that I've uh, <laughs> separated myself from any allegiance to the NFL, and that's one sponsor I wanted to get. I'll say this. If Ben Roethlisberger had been proven to have done what he got suspended for a couple of seasons ago, and they threw the book at him, then that's fine. They penalized the guy, and then he was found innocent. That messed up the Steelers' season. It was by many people seen to throw a wrench into the system uh, to hurt the Steelers. And on the other side, how many years do you have in the NFL before your body is over and your glory days are done? When you suspend somebody from a series of games on an allegation, you are getting in the right, getting in the middle, in the middle of their uh, pursuit of happiness, right, if you will. We are innocent now. If Hernandez turns out to have murdered someone, throw the book at him, take his career away, take it all away. If he murdered somebody in cold blood, by all means, I'm not saying don't do it. What I am saying is that. He should be allowed to play the game until he has had his day in court. Am I saying he's innocent? I have no idea. He plays for my team that I support. Is he human scum? Is I have no idea. I am saying that to suspend him, which if they haven't, they're going to, to suspend him on an allegation is wrong. And you, listening to this, would want the same rights and respect if you were in his shoes. Former New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez is reportedly the focus of a case being presented to a Massachusetts grand jury involving a 2012 double homicide in Boston. Former Patriots. See, I told you I didn't follow it that much. I'm not a big off-season sports reader. I guess he's not with us. But that doesn't change my standing. Obviously, you know I'm talking about a point here. My FoxBoston.com, citing an unnamed law enforcement official, reported that prosecutors are presenting evidence in the double murder case of Sulphur County Grand Jury. Two men died in the shooting in Boston South End on July 15, 2012, and another was wounded. Witnesses reported seeing gunfire coming from a gray SUV with a Rhode Island license plate. It goes on, authorities said that 29-year-old Daniel George Correa and D.R.U. Abru and 28-year-old Sapphiro Taxiera Futado were killed. So good with foreign languages. But police didn't identify the third victim. The official told MyFoxBoston.com that investigators believe Hernandez and the shooting victims were at the same Boston nightclub before the fatal altercation. 
Well, I'm glad that uh, what few fights I've seen ever break out at clubs that I go to, I'm glad that I wasn't, you know, just picked on because I happened to be there. Hernandez is pleaded not guilty, and well, that doesn't matter. You're guilty. You can't play football. You should go to jail. Hernandez is pleaded not guilty in the shooting of 27-year-old Odin Lloyd, whose body was found June 17th, not far from Hernandez's North Attebar Mansion. His defense team has called the cause, the case, circumstantial, and said Hernandez looks forward to clearing his name. <sighs> Look. All I'm saying is this. By all means, throw the book at him if he's guilty. But this notion that we can punish people before they've had their day in court, and to say that every accusation is in fact absolutely true is to do an injustice. Uh, a disjustice, I should say. So, it is for what it is, but I'm against it, and if you think about it, I'm pretty sure you'll find that to be a correct view. Last thing that I want to get to is uh, for Giselle. Uh, Giselle and I, uh, she was the first correspondent the show has ever had. We disagree in every possible way about the Zimmerman uh, uh, Trayvon case. Every way you could. Every possible way. Uh, neither one of us think it was race motivated, by the way. But beyond that, we disagree in every possible way. Well, she sent me this, and she asked if I also supported it for this woman, because this woman got injustice. I, it was what I think. George Zimmerman got justice because of this law, and this law, stand your ground, this law failed to bring justice to this woman. I'm not shifty here. I believe George Zimmerman was innocent of murder. Negligence, and I think he was guilty of that. Murder, no. Um, I think this woman is innocent, and I think the law screwed her. Uh, having said that, Tampa, Florida, Marissa Alexander had never been arrested before. She fired a bullet at a wall one day in 2010 to scare off her husband when she felt that he was threatening her. Nobody got hurt, but this month, a Northeast Florida judge was bound by state law to sentence her to 20 years in prison. Does that change my view on Zimmerman? No, I think she got shafted, and I think this should be fought in every possible way. I think it's wrong, and I think what happened to her is wrong. Alexander, a 31-year-old mother of a toddler and 11-year-old twins, knew it was coming. She had claimed self-defense, tried to invoke Florida Stand Your Ground Law, and rejected plea deals that could have gotten her a much shorter sentence. A jury found her guilty as charged, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Because she fouled the gun while committing a felony, Florida's mandatory minimum gun law dictated a 20-year sentence. That means their gun laws are very shifty. We've learned a new word today by Shazarzad's hat. Her case in Jacksonville has drawn a fresh round of criticism aimed at mandatory minimum sentencing laws. The local NWAC, NAACP chapter and the district's African American congresswoman says blacks are more often incarcerated for long periods. Blah, 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 blah. Get race out of it. I'm pretty sure her husband was black who she shot at. Obviously, it's not race. And it also has added fuel to the controversy over Florida's Stand Your Ground Law, which judge, the judge would not allow Alexander to revoke. Why? Because he was shady. State Attorney Angela Corey, who also is overseeing the prosecution of shooter George Zimmerman in the Trayvon Martin case, stands by the handling of Alexander's case. Corey says she believes Alexander aimed the gun at the man and his two sons, and if the bullet she fired could have ricocheted and hit any of them, could have, didn't. Bottom line, justice has failed this woman. The article is very long, so go to the Huffington Post and look at it. Uh, Marissa Alexander gets 20 years for firing warning shot. Justice failed her. You know what? I would be totally in favor of any kind of peaceful rally or any kind of petition anybody would want to help this woman. I am nothing else am consistent. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. of the Media Speak signing off. Make sure you check out the Charity Connection. Dana Mobley Christ runs it. Charity Connection. She raises money for people. She's lung cancer.
So now we need to raise money for her and help her beat cancer's ass. Friends, please donate to The Correct Views. That's my show. If you can, leave a comment. I'll tell you how to do so. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Um, look for the high-depth version of this on my channel, and thank you for watching, friends. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my live listening friends.